Good evening. Good to be with you again and, and uh, just uh, chat about uh, the summaries that, that I've been trying to give in English of, of some of what, our, what we're doing in our French church about uh, the privilege we have of hearing from God, that, that actually God <laughs> desires to communicate with us, to relate with us. Obviously, he's made us in his image, so he's made us as beings who uh, love to interact, who are social, and, and, and he's made us to interact with himself. And uh, obviously, Christ being the central character, Jesus Christ being the central character who links us once again to, to God the Father. Uh, unfortunately, we broke away uh, in Genesis 3, the third chapter of the Bible, broke away from this close relationship we had and, and started to just try to do our own thing. And uh, the results on many levels, not all levels, the results have been catastrophic. And uh, so that image that God put in us has been uh, irreparably harmed until when we meet Jesus Christ and when he enters our life and links his spirit with our spirit, suddenly we come alive again and he begins rebuilding in us this image of God that includes uh, his character, like uh, loving, uh, he's peaceful, he's joyful, uh, he's patient. So all this gets built into our character. Well, one of the ways, obviously, that we grow in the relationship and we become again more and more like Jesus himself is because God takes pains to communicate with us. Uh, and the great thing, of course, it, it's not a situation of robotic communication. He's not controlling us uh, like I can, quote, control my computer. We're not programmed in that way. We're not hardwired. No, he, he truly treats us as individuals. And, uh, uh, and, he, and therefore he dialogues, he, he teaches, he walks with us. So we've been in our church, we've been looking at how does God communicate with us? And obviously his, his, the Bible, his written word, the person of Christ is number one because we study his life, we let him speak to us through his life, uh, through his death, through his uh, resurrection. So. All of this is happening, and I've been teaching one thing at a time, and and I suddenly, uh, you know, realized uh, something came to mind. The whole area that's that's more of an, not it's not unconscious, but it happens a lot in the subconscious. I suppose we could call it the area of dreams. Now, I was how did I get there? I was reading in Acts two, chapter two, right after the Holy Spirit comes. Uh, to fill believers. And the Apostle Peter makes very clear that he sees what's going on at, on the day of Pentecost, the day the Holy Spirit is poured out on people and he comes to inhabit people in a way that's deeper, more profound and, uh, and enduring than he inhabited people in the Old Testament. And and Peter stands up and he says this to explain Pentecost and those uh, Christians at the time who were proclaiming God's greatness and uh, talking about things that he had done. And they were proclaiming those things in human earthly languages that they had never learned. This is in Acts chapter 2. So people are wondering, what the heck is going on here? How did these people from Galilee, uh, Galilee learned to speak Arabic and Latin and maybe you know Greek they probably spoke but some of these other languages how did they learn it was a miracle and so Peter stands up and he says this God tells us in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all people and your sons and your daughters will prophesy that means they'll speak about me they'll give messages telling about the greatness of God among other things your young men will see visions when the Holy Spirit comes, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my Spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. 
So here I am, a, a Western Christian, uh, North American Western, and and I'm very aware that 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 we tend to be uh, a little more Cartesian, uh, a little more okay. We got to see it in black and white. Uh, we're sometimes cautious about touchy feely stuff. That's not all bad, but it's very clear here. Peter says in the last days, starting from the pouring out of the Holy Spirit to the day that Jesus returns, people are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, people of all ages and all social classes and all races. And, and, and those people, different people, will speak God's message, and some are going to have visions, some will dream dreams. In fact, says the old man, would dream dreams and I thought oh my you know I'm 66 uh, I wonder <laughs> I'll be dreaming dreams so I decided to get into this and look at it and I started to analyze it and said okay fine huh? so God desires to speak to us through dreams through visions now how how's that possible well anyone that's read the Old Testament knows that dreams are are actually relatively prevalent uh, many people had dreams and they meant Christian, and, not Christian, excuse me, uh, believers in God and, 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 and pagans or non-believers. But in the New Testament, why once we have the Holy Spirit would, would this continue, dreams and visions? So I started thinking about that and I said, okay, well, a dream, fine, that's when we're asleep. We all uh, have dreams, they tell us, and most of us remember at least a little bit when we wake up that we've dreamed or sometimes we're awakened by a, a dream but it may be even a nightmare uh, visions that's a little different it usually means we're awake it could be in the night or in the day and we're we're like seeing but it's not three-dimensional reality we're, we're seeing more of a two-dimensional reality kind of like a film the way we watch films or videos but it's communicating something so I thought, wow, okay, where do we go from here? And, I, and so I turned a little further in Acts to Acts 16, verses uh, 6 through 9. And there we discover Paul and Silas are on a journey through what is today modern Turkey. And they're obviously talking about the person of Jesus. They're trying to start uh, new churches. That's kind of what they do on their missionary journeys. And two times they attempt to go somewhere and the Holy Spirit tells them, no, don't go there. Now, interestingly, we're not told how that's communicated, but it is. Holy Spirit, don't go there. So then they try to, up, oh, don't go there. Well, they wind up at a port city on the ocean called Troas. And in Troas, Paul, in the middle of the night, has a vision. And in this vision, he sees a man from Macedonia, which is just across the water, what, what we call modern-day Greece. And in fact, there was a country even in Macedonia, just across the water. And this man is standing there calling out to him, come, come, come over and help us. And Paul and Silas and Luke and, and you know, whoever else is with them, right away, they decide God is leading us. The Holy Spirit shut the door at two previous places, but now he's calling us to get on a boat and go over to Macedonia. So I looked at that and I said, wow, there are any number of ways that, that God through his Spirit could have spoken to Paul, to Silas, or to another one in the group to say, hey, I really think we need to go from down to Troas, and from Troas, we need to go to Macedonia. In the sovereignty of God, he chooses a vision. Again, it doesn't tell us why, but what strikes me is visions, dreams. God is the one who chooses, and he also may be. Uh, through those things continues to build our trust our faith in him and also at times maybe in a little sense of the word bypassing our intellect 
uh, and our thoughts on that particular issue. From the actions of Paul and Silas, it appears very, very clear that at least on this trip, it was not their intention to cross the water and go to Greece. Now, maybe it would have been in the future, and I may be reading in a little bit here. But the fact that they tried twice to stay centered in the middle of Asia Minor, in modern-day Turkey, and work there and evangelize there, but the Holy Spirit prevented them. Through this vision, they conclude, no, we're not supposed to stay here. We're supposed to pack up and go across the water to Macedonia. And I'm wondering if God didn't use that to, in a sense, uh, bypass their ideas and their focus on Turkey, modern-day Turkey. Like I said, I'm not positive. But it is his choice. And we see that elsewhere in Acts. When Peter was called to uh, witness, to evangelize uh, Cornelius and his household, God spoke to him primarily through a vision with the unclean animals. This is in Acts 10. He also spoke to Cornelius uh, with a vision of an angel coming to speak to him. Why? I'm not sure why. Why didn't he just tell Peter, look, there are verses in the Old Testament that say, speak the word of God to everybody, to all nations, because there are verses that say that, okay? They're mentioned in, in uh, Acts 15 even by the Apostle James. So anyway, all this to say, it was so interesting as we talked about this as a church later that week. And I asked people, have you ever had a dream where God has used that dream to speak to you and you knew, wow, this is from God. And hands, you know, fingers start going up. This person says, yes, and here's why. And I dreamed of this disordered house and God just spoke to me and said, that's your life. That's your life. It's disordered. It needs to be cleaned up. It needs to be put together. Another person had a dream to, to make amends with somebody, to to make peace with somebody, to forgive. In fact, it was her ex-husband. All of a sudden, I started to see again, God speaks to us in many ways, and he tells us, sometimes dreams and visions. Let's be open. Talk to me any way you want. I want to hear from you. So I'll be afraid. Obviously, if you, if, if you think it's something that's going to turn your whole life upside down, your life, your family's life, your children's life, your, maybe bounce it off of a couple people. <laughs> Do you think this is from God? <laughs> but it's exciting. There's nothing more exciting than just walking with him, being stretched. Stretch maybe out of our box. Stretch to trust him in a new way. God bless you.